Hi, we're back again, and I have to introduce Adon Bautista. He's a member of the Fresno Masonic Lodge 247, but he's here today for a very special topic. So we're going to start it right now. Hello, Adon. Hi, Carol. Nice to be here. Oh, it's good to have you. I'm so glad you came in. Thank you. And I know that you have something special that you want to get out there today, and it's something I really believe in. So just go for it. <laughs> well, the reason why I'm participating here is because I want to uh, create awareness on the community about kidney transplantation and, in general, organ donation. Yes, I, I'm blessed to have a kidney transplant for about 10 years now. Well, over 10 years. I like to spread the word so other people can benefit and other people can donate too. Oh my gosh, and you're aligned to do this. <laughs> yes. To thank, thanks to somebody else and a lot of people. I know it does, takes a lot of people to get this whole thing going. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the, the process is um, basically when you're going to get a transplant, you can get it from two different sources. Either you get it from a, a deceased donor or you get it from a living donor. In my case, I was. Uh, very lucky to have it from one of my cousins. It was oh. a, a living donor uh, wow. transplant. So that's very good because usually uh, the chances of, of those uh, transplants or the kidney that you get donated, uh, the expectancy of success is much, it's higher. I won't say much higher, but in general it's higher oh. for the kidney transplant to succeed um, than if it comes from a deceased donor. Wow. Yeah, it's still it's still pretty good. Uh, I think it's about 98, 99 percent success when it comes from a from a living donor, and probably around 93 to 95 percent success when it comes from a deceased donor. So I mean that the possibilities of success are still pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Well, gee, that's that's really interesting. So, what did you have to do? You just had to talk to people that were in your family and different different people. Or? Well, it's. It's, it's somewhat difficult uh, for people to decide to donate because, for one, there's the fear of what if it happens to you? Yes. And then I already gave a kidney when we have two in general. <laughs> Some people very rarely have three, but in general it's just two. I didn't even really two. think of that, but that's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I actually didn't want to tell my family at first uh, about my condition, but once I got to the point in which I was really close to uh, getting to need dialysis, when the doctors say, okay, we're gonna have to do dialysis, then I thought, well, I better tell my, my, my relatives, my parents, because they are gonna see the changes in my schedule and the things oh. that I do, and maybe in the way I look. So once I, I spoke up and say something about it, they communicated to my other relatives, and uh, one of my cousins say, I'll do it. Wow, that is yes. fantastic to do a thing like that. I mean, it's that's such a serious thing that you're doing. Yes. That, you know, to, for, you just have to bless this person because. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. gosh. And you like, know, for, for such a complicated disease, because once you are going to actual renal failure, there's so many other things that start to break down. Mm. It is actually a very easy fix if, if you were going to get a transplant. So, out of the 650,000 people in the United States that live with end stage kidney disease, which is out of the five stages, the fifth, fifth stage is the end, end stage. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when you actually need dialysis to live. Uh, it's a pretty easy fix because once you have somebody that gives you the kidney, in my case, I was back to work in six weeks. Mm, no kidding. Yeah, and my cousin who gave me the kidney, uh, we came back from San Francisco on a Friday. My transplant was on a Tuesday. We came back on a Friday. By next Tuesday, she was already walking in the mall, shopping, a little sore, but she was doing her regular life. So was the she, so you got a little bit of she in you. You know, sometimes I say jokingly <laughs> that I have girl parts. <laughs> okay. Anyways. If, if girls give you trouble, you say, wait a minute, I got a little hey. girl, you fool, don't fool around me. <laughs> yeah, true. That's wonderful. Yes. So, uh, what is the what is the rate of uh, how many people donate to this? Okay, so I have some uh, small statistics here from 2017. Uh, almost 35 kidney transplants were uh, performed in the United States, and about 28, uh, or almost 29,000 of those transplants were from deceased donors, mm. and the rest, about six or seven thousand, were from living donors. Mm. 
So it's very important for people, you know, when you sign up for your um, ID or your driver's license to indicate that you are a donor, but also it's very important that you tell your family, your spouse, because a lot of times that's a problem, that you might be a donor, but if your spouse um, decides, no, I'm not gonna allow that to happen, a lot of times it doesn't happen, or most of the times it doesn't happen. So your wow. wishes, for one, are not respected, and then people don't get a, a transplant, even though that's probably your, your wish. So anyways, mm -hmm. create awareness is very important ab about deceased donors. And when it comes to living donors, uh, you have to know that you can actually live a regular life just like anybody else. You will just have one less kidney. Mm -hmm. But your kidney, in, for the donor, the kidney grows up a little bit more to catch up with the function. But in general, you live a normal life. And in fact, uh, the statistics say that the donor a lot of times has a better life, or, or I should say a better health. Better health. While your health. Wow. Because then you start seeing the doctor more often, maybe mm -hmm. other things can be cut up on time. So they could actually live a healthier life. Mm -hmm. well, that's great to know. I, I, you know, you don't, you hear about people getting the operation, but they, you don't usually hear about how they feel about it later, you know, how many years it takes to really feel like it was part of you or something. I don't know, do you have to do that or not? <laughs> well, uh, in, the, in the case of my, my cousin, uh, she had to follow up uh, with the doctor uh, about every six months and then once a year for, a, for like five years. And then they finally say, okay, we don't need to follow up you anymore. Oh. And she lives in Mexico, actually. So she oh. was coming from Mexico to get tested, and then she will go back. Oh, my gosh. Uh, sometimes in a month, she had to come twice and then go right back to Guadalajara, where I'm from oh, and where she's oh, from. That's a long way. Um, so we will be in, in that transition. But um, it was a very interesting process. Uh, she did all kinds of testing, uh, make sure that we match and so on. Mm -hmm. um, finally, uh, December 23rd of this uh, 2008. That, that was my great. Christmas gift. Oh, what a nice Christmas gift. <laughs> that, was my, that was my Christmas wow. gift. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, now, what, what, uh, what is me, I know that you want to talk about donations. What do the donations go to? Uh, the donations of uh, transplants, you mean? Or, or what donations are you talking about? I'm sorry. I, I, Oh, I, I, thought, I thought you were here to talk about donations. No, well, no, I'm just talking about the donation of your oh, organs, yeah. Oh, that kind yes, of donation. that kind of donation. Okay. Sorry, I got lost a little but, bit. Well, you know, so many people <laughs> want money donations. I didn't, no, didn't connect, connect. I think uh, if people just sign up uh, when they get the driver's license, like mm -hmm. I mentioned it, mm -hmm. and then they make their wishes made to their family, then it will be probably a great increase in, in the donation rates in, in general. Yes. Well, that is foundation. That's the, the donations I like. Um, we're falling apart here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that kind of donation is really top. I mean, you can give money, but to give a part of your body to somebody is really something very brave and something wonderful. And so I th I'm so grateful that you came in to talk about this today. Oh, Did you have something more you wanted to say about it? Well, it's living with kidneys is a very difficult life. Oh. It's absolutely difficult. So if you know of somebody that is in that situation, if you're not giving a kidney, at least be supportive of them because they are really having a rough time. Oh, that's very yes. good. Uh, you know, it, it really is a showing of love to be supportive of things like that. And love is the only really strong thing in the world. So it, that, that does the healing, right? Absolutely. That does the yes. healing. Oh, thank you, Thank Carl. you so much for Thanks. coming in today. And if you feel like it, come in again. Talk Absolutely. about it again. Anytime. Because, I can't talk because, too much. <laughs> that, no, because, you know, I'm sure there are people that really think that's such a horrible thing that they're scared to death. So it's good to hear somebody like that that says, okay, you can just go through it and have a new life. Right? Absolutely. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. I, thank you. And I'll come in again, right? You come in. Absolutely, okay. anytime. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back.